This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Brace yourself and experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. But the Lord said to me, He said, Do you know that there are more knowledgeable people than there are wise people? Now, that we congregate people who are knowledgeable, there are more, but people who are wise are very few. Have you seen professors who beat their wives before? Okay, maybe I've not heard. Do you think a professor can beat his wife with all that he knows? Have you seen a professor trying to pick on an undergraduate that he just wants to sleep with her? With all that he knows about what happens when you go that way. Knowledge does not always create wise men. No, no. So when he said it to me, I said, so what you, for me? He said, share with them. I said, they will say I don't have figures. So he said, write it in your notes that you have no statistical backup. But let them know that I told you so. That there are more knowledgeable men than wise men, even amongst believers. If some people's notes, these notes you are writing, and please write to write because a time is going to come when truth will be more scarce than it is now. So please document. But I'm saying to you that if these your notes have lives, many of them will be mighty men of God, or they'll be mighty notes of God. These notes, the notes, the notes have embodied all the tokens of of consecration they know all the steps to live a successful life they know all the steps to build an altar they know all the steps to be a vibrant christian the only thing the notes cannot have because they cannot self-confess the lordship of jesus is entrance into the economy of god which is signified by the possession of eternal life if these notes have it they'll be stronger than many of us but you see, your writings are proof that you have intercourse with knowledge. But until knowledge becomes an experience, you are not wise. How do you cross the road? Look. Oh, yeah, now. You should know that one. I know you don't know the national anthem, but at least you know this one. Yes. So you look left, you look right, and you look left again before you honestly speak even in road crossing or how does he say it respectfully speaking that's how he says it many of us even in crossing the road are not wise should we run a check when last did you look left look right look left again before you crossed when last if you did that today crossing the road raise your hand you look left, you look right, you now look left again. Eh? You now look right again. Okay, before you cross, you did that. Okay, so raise your hand. Raise your hands. Awesome. How many people have crossed the road today? Raise your hands. So now you have your statistical data. That even though all of us are believers, and if in the natural we do not demonstrate the experience of what we have learned, how much more spiritual? Do you think you should be prayerless at this level? If we come to your house and we look into your notes, there will be keys to a prayerful life. Do you think you should be faithless right now? It means you have gathered knowledge. But the press into the experience is not there. What is lacking is wisdom. Um, okay, I have time. Yes, so I can take off at six. So let me let me give you three portions of scripture to advertise the cry that we want to raise to God. Luke seven thirty five. Luke seven thirty five. This was an utterance of Jesus Himself. Now, this verse is not an isolated communication 
if you read up a little from about verse 28 Jesus was attempting to advertise a messenger that was sent from God the man John the Baptist and his labors to pave a way I'm paraphrasing for entrance into that which Jesus came to advertise as the kingdom. The Pharisees, a, a couple of people, the people around Jesus, actually subscribed to what John came to advertise. And in their subscription, they came into repented status. And their repented status became a justification for what John came to preach. It's like somebody walks around, like when we're in Accra yesterday, somebody came, we're trying to board a vehicle, and then she said, Brother, it's all of rice. Now, meanwhile, I was hungry, and it's okay for I hope it's okay for me to say I was hungry. Even Jesus was hungry. So we eat. So, but but I knew I was coming home, but my wife would have cooked, so why eat jollof rice on the road, for God's sake? So I said, I'm not interested. But you see, if I bought the jollof rice and I ate, the proof that what I bought was food will be what? Will be that the hunger... Oh, stay with me now. If you're hungry and you buy rice, what happens? The hunger disappears... And the disappearance of the hunger will be proof that what was sold to me was food. So if a gospel is preached to you, it comes, one that comes with a baptism, you subscribe to the gospel, you take part in the baptism, and you arrive at a status. That process is justified to be of God because what was promised was entered into. Are you with me? Now, Jesus began to now speak to the Pharisees who did not think it was right for them to subscribe to John. Because the Pharisees also heard John speak, but they did not buy into his truth. And because they did not buy into his truth, in them the righteousness of God did not find establishment. So Jesus, in this verse of reference, was establishing what the people did as proof of wisdom. That wisdom has produced a people. Wisdom has produced a product. Knowledge was given to them and they labored into it. And because they labored into it, God's expectation of a product as a repented people was achieved. So Jesus said wisdom is give me the two verses ahead of it let's go from 32 you see what the son of man is okay no 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 32 2 2 2 so this was just indictment to the pharisees they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another and saying we have piped unto you and ye have not danced we have mourned to you and ye have not wept it means whatever they do to them they are just unresponsive for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and he say he had a devil. So you, God sent you a messenger, but you decided to not believe the messenger. Next verse. The son of man also came, eating and drinking, and he said, Behold, a glutinous man and a wine barber, a friend of publicans and sinners. You seemingly say no to everybody that God sends to you. But you claim that in trying to reject God's messengers, you are wise. Wisdom is justified by his products. The people who received me, the people who received John, have entered into a status. All your rejection has kept you in your sins. That's what Jesus is saying. So that you hear the gospel that you come to church is not an end. Your life is supposed to express a kind of wisdom. And until your life expresses that kind of wisdom, it means that you are in the class of the knowledgeable and not in the class of the wise. 
Let's look at another scripture. Ephesians 5. 15 to 17. Because somebody may be saying, I don't believe. Christ has been made unto me the wisdom of God. That's a legal statement. It may not be your experience till you die. This is Paul's admonition. See then. And I'm taking this admonition from the perfected legalities that establish Christ as the wisdom of God unto you, John. That a soft, the Christ was installed in you like a software, like an app. And that app gives you a potential to be wise. But the, what do you call that thing on our phones? The icon has to be tapped. I know you have WhatsApp on your phone. But you see, the app only becomes self-running when you click it. So if I tell you I sent you a message on WhatsApp, if your phone is a good phone, and has, it's supposed to have, if it's one message, to have a red with one, right, at the edge. If you decide not to click that green icon, and you click the black one that has X, are you going to read my message? Because you went to X, not WhatsApp. And if you now come and say, I didn't see your message, it will not be that I did not do what I was supposed to do. It will be that you did not accurately click what you were supposed to click. And that's the problem that we have. So Paul says to them, see then that ye work circumspectly. Not as wise, not sorry, not as fools, but as wise. Who was he speaking to? Believers or the hidden? It means a believer can work as a fool. He refuses to appropriate for existence what Jesus has done for him. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 17 is what I really need. Wherefore, as a result of these instructions that have been given, be ye not unwise because you can be unwise. Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It means to be wise has to do with understanding what the will of the Lord is. We had some brief stuff in the house, and I'm going to use that. So I don't go to people's houses that much. So, my son has a toy car. A toy car that if you pull a rope, the car will run. You know those kind of cars. And then when the rope unwinds, it will stop. So, we dress for church and he holds the toy car. He just got it. So, he's still addicted to it. it the addiction takes only four days. So, he, he was planning to bring it to church. I said, you can't hold a toy on your way to church that moves. His response to me was, because if we are praying, and is moving, it will distract. I'm using his exact words. That's wisdom. It's the demonstration of the understanding of how that car moves and the potential that the car has. Because if they are praying in their class and everybody has vroom, 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 vroom. Abi? It means that if you will take an action, understanding goes beyond this is what god wants me to do it must come into this is what god wants me to do and if i do it this way this is the outcome of it when you put those things together we say that you are wise so that even if you have put one leg on the road and a trailer is coming you should not say my leg is already on the road i will cross you are not wise because you did not weigh action with outcomes. One so fun trailer we show or email. Abi, if you say it, if you plan to say it, there's a place where you will say it from. May God give you understanding. 
You know, in the movies, the person will be saying it, but he will be looking at himself too. I'm stopping at verse 17. So the Bible says, be not unwise. And I wrote here potential because a believer has the privilege or has the capacity to either be wise or wise. You can be coming to church every day and the things you are learning don't become an experience. It means you have not stumbled into wisdom. My last scripture so that we can join. We are going to pray. That's what I want to do. James 1, 5 to 8. The things I've said are supposed to make us arrive at a junction. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, and that's the junction, a moment of realization must be arrived at. So that in a few seconds, you can compare the things that you have been learning with the kind of life that you have been leading. And if you find out that there is a gap, an experiential gap between what has been learned and the kind of life that you are leading, the conclusion is that you are knowledgeable, you are not wise. If you have been taught to have faith in God and you have written down, I will have faith, and you get to a junction that requires the possession of faith and you decide to live in doubt, it means that you are not wise. That's how to bridge the gap. If we say be patient and you come to a junction in which patience is supposed to deliver and you go forth in haste, it means that you are not wise. What I tried to do was to, from scriptures, help you arrive at this junction. It's not everybody's prayer. That's why it's not a call to everyone. It's if any of you. It means in, the, in James's day, it was not a common reality to be unwise. But in case there are scattered expressions of folly, James says, don't be angry. Don't leave church. So don't pick your bags now. What that man should do is to ask of God. And then in case you think God is going to reprimand you or rebuke you for being stupid, he defines that God. He said, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not. He's not going to say, uh, I thought you'll be moving around foolishly. Also, you even come back to ask me. He's not going to cash in on your or what I mean by cashing is to use the opportunity of your asking to vent certain frustrations that are oh. you know that kind of thing God doesn't invest in that kind of enterprise rather he gives liberally somebody say liberally Liberally means if the commodity is available, God will give it. And the last time I checked, his wisdom bank is inexhaustible. If all of us believers decide not to ask for any other thing, we just ask him for wisdom, God will keep giving until we have no place to put wisdom anymore. He gives liberally. An upbraided note, and it shall be given him. Six and seven. But you see, the asking comes with a protocol. Remember last week, I spoke to you on the concept of a spiritual substance. Evangel. If I say have wisdom, would you see it coming to you? So it's possible for you to walk back home and say, I asked God did not give me. Because what you're asking for is only made tangible by its products are you with me it is justified it is its possession is validated by what it produces and not by a weight that lands in your chest mm, i have it now i say we do that all the time we say of the mercies that the lord has given me may it please him to give to you so have mercy the person say, mm, 
and I'm wondering, so oh, who won? Maybe, maybe I, I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir. Maybe one of these question and answer sessions, we need to ask people, when you receive, how do you feel? I think it's good to, what do you think? It's good to probe into it. How do you feel? I'm not, if there's a cry from your spirit, cry, but you don't, that's not the sign. You don't need to falsify the sign as the fact that I received it. You can receive it and keep working, no sound. It has a way of producing results if it was received accurately. So the Bible helps us out of the drama to know how this spiritual substance that we have arrived at a place to say we don't have it or we don't have it in sufficiency how is it received the bible says one when he that man has let him ask how in faith It means your asking will be built into a promise that God has made. So you will ask in faith. Not wavering. Your conviction that God has and will give must be in place. The reason is because he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed verse 7 that's where i stop for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord when convictions are not stable did i get it did i not get it did he give me is he angry with me when you engage in all those things you are like a you are like a, a sheep on the sea being tossed to and fro by all kind of waves and the bible says forget about the answer to your prayer don't even think that you will receive anything from the lord this journey that we are going to come on will bring you to this junction many times because of the mystical nature of time you will many times conclude that Kai, I was not wise. You may, be, you may be tempted to cry more than now I understand why I'm here. But you see, weeping over what is past is unnecessary. At those times, simply ask God for a supply. Tonight, in your seated positions, we're going to pray for three minutes. Remember where we started from likewise the spirit helpeth our infirmities there is an absence of sufficient wisdom that's what we have noticed but that wisdom is designed to be supplied within the context of the help of the spirit we want to ask that by his spirit god will help our infirmity help my infirmity oh help my infirmity help my infirmity Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. <laughs> Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. There is a bridge that connects what I know with who I will be. Give me wisdom. Sona hanarato hasai mata tata manto kalika kovalanto barakati baha ko iekete kapatis seakata parante kal. This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tuluagola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.